In this video, we're going to look at how to shade alternating rows in a table using conditional formatting. Before I show you how this is done, let's look at how most people would solve this problem if they didn't know how to do this using conditional formatting. If you're just starting off using Excel, you're likely to think that you would have to highlight a row, let's take row 3, and then give it some sort of background color like a light blue fill. And then you'd take the next alternating row, like in this case row 5, and paint it blue, and then the next alternating row, row seven, and paint it blue, and then do this repeatedly throughout the entire table. Not only is this tedious and time consuming, but imagine a table with say a million records, you'd have to alternately highlight 500,000 rows to paint them blue. Now eventually you discover this wonderful feature called the Format Painter. The Format Painter is almost like a copy paste, but only for artwork. So if we were to take the first row that we want to be blue, and we shade that, then we'll highlight the two rows that are going to serve as our example for what we want all the other rows to look like. So I have a white row and a blue row. So I'll go up here and click my Format Painter button, and now I'll highlight all the remaining rows. And now I have the alternating white-blue color row banding that I was going for. The problem with this technique is that the color is essentially tied to the data. So if we were to go to, say, the last name column, and then go up and do something like an A to Z sort, when our data moves, the color moves with it, and thus it completely disrupts the color banding. Let's put that back. And if you were to go in and insert a series of rows, you'd lose the color banding as well. Another way to apply this color banding format is to use Excel's data table feature. Data tables are wonderful because not only do they perform a whole host of services, but one of the things they do is they take care of all the color management. So we can apply this color banding with a click and it becomes immune to things like sorting and filtering and adding and removing rows. To upgrade this table to a proper data table, I'll use a control T shortcut, verify my data range and verify that I do have a header row and click OK. You can now see I got the color banding in a click. And the great thing is I can go in here and I can change the direction of the color banding I can even change the color of the color banding with just a click. If I were to go in here and sort this table, say by last name, you can see that the data moves, but the color banding stays in place because the color banding is now independent from the data, it's detached. But what if you're not using a proper data table? What if you want to stick with the more traditional plain table structure? So I'm gonna hit undo and revert this back to just a regular table. We'll use conditional formatting to detect whether a cell is on an odd row or an even row, and then shade or not shade accordingly. In order for conditional formatting to detect whether a cell is on an odd or even row, we're going to use one of two Excel functions, is odd or is even. Let's look at a demonstration on how the is odd and is even functions work. So in this simple demonstration, we've got two numbers, 14 and 17, an even number and an odd number. And I'd like to detect whether that number is an even number or an odd number. So in our first example, we're going to use a function called isEven. And we'll point to the 14. And it comes back and says, true, this is an even number. If I fill that formula down to the next row, we get a false because 17 is not an even number. Now, if we wanted to detect odd numbers instead of even numbers, we could use the function is odd and then point to the number. And since 14 is an even number, is odd returns a false, but returns a true in the event that you're pointed to an odd number. Now we're looking at hard coded values within a cell. We don't wanna look at the values within the cell. We want to look at the row that that cell is on. So we'd like to look at the actual row numbers, one, two, three, four, et cetera. To do this, we can use a function called row. Now the row function returns the row number of a cell that you refer to. For this cell in E2, if I type in equals row, and then an open and close parentheses, it tells me that that is on row two. If I use that same formula on row three, I get three as the response. So what we can do now is we can use the row function instead of the cell reference, and that will detect the row number of the current cell. So let's go back here and replace this A2 with a row function, and we'll fill that down. I'll do the same thing with the isOdd function. We'll replace the A2 reference with a row function, and I will fill this down. 
If we were to evaluate the is even row function at a step by step level, in the case of cell B2, the row function returns the number 2. If we send the number 2 into the is even function, that returns a true. In cell B3, the row function evaluates to a 3. Sending that into the is even function will return a false. So let's return back to our example. Using a couple test columns, if I were to write the function equals is odd and then use the row function, and I'll fill this down for the remainder of the table, you can see we get alternating false and trues. I'll do the same thing with the is even and then use the row function to detect the cell's row address, fill that down the table, and now we get the opposite true false responses. So depending on whether you want the even rows to be shaded or the odd rows to be shaded, will dictate which of these approaches you use. Since we want the odd rows to be shaded, we'll use the version that is is odd. So everywhere that the is odd function returns a true based on that row detection, we'll get the banding. We'll begin by highlighting our data, and then on the home ribbon in the style section, we'll choose conditional formatting. Here we're going to create our own new rule, and this rule will use a formula to determine which cells to format. Here is where we write our is odd or is even formula using the row detection. So since we want the odd rows to be shaded, we'll type in equals is odd, and then we'll use the row function to do that row detection. To get our blue shaded background, we'll go to the format button. This will open up the format cells dialog box, and I'll go to the fill tab, and I'm going to choose a light blue fill. I'll hit OK a couple times. And now you can see how every other row has this blue shading. Now that was a little more work than the format painter, but the advantage is the shading is now under the control of conditional formatting. It's not just simply assigned to the cell, and when the data moves, the color moves with it. Now the color is independent from the data. If I were to go to the last name column and do an ascending sort, you can see how the data moves but the color doesn't, because the color is looking at the cell location, not the data. If I were to sort by audit date, newest to oldest, my data moves, my color does not. One of the problems with how we applied conditional formatting is that we applied it to the existing data. So what happens if we add new records to the bottom of this table? Well, luckily for us, conditional formatting is actually smart enough to say, hey, if I see that you're typing in new data, I will extend the rule of the conditional formatting to these new records. So if I type in Smith, now that next row was going to be white anyways, but if I type in Jones, now the cell is going to be blue. So as long as you're typing in new records directly below the table, the conditional format will be applied to the new rows. There is a problem, however, with copy-pasted data. If I were to take these new records and copy them, and then drop my cursor at the next available row on the table and paste, I don't get the conditional formatting. So if you're typing new data, you get it. If you're copy pasting new data, you don't. One way to mitigate this issue is to highlight more than the original data set. In other words, highlight as many additional blank rows as you think you might be adding to this table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to conditional formatting, go to manage rules, and we can see here that our is odd rule is being applied to cells A2 through O43. So if I think I'm going to have hundreds of rows in this table over the life of the file's use, I could go in here and just pre-format, say a thousand rows, hit OK. And now I have all the row banding for all the future records. I'm not really a fan of this approach because I don't like to have all those empty shaded rows in my table. So what if we were to add a second rule that detects whether a name has been placed in the first column and the moment it detects a name in the first column, it will automatically shade that row. So we'll begin by selecting the original range that we applied the first rule to. So I'm going to go up here to the name box, and I'm going to select cells A2 through O1000. Now notice that A2 is the active cell. So in the case of row 2, we want every cell on that row to look at cell A2. If we were to repeat this row down the table, we want every cell on row 3 to look at cell A3, and every cell on row 4 to look at cell A4. So when we write our rule, conditional formatting, new rule, I'm going to use a formula, and we're pretending like we're thinking about all the cells just on row 2. So I'm going to type in equals A2, but since I want every cell on that row to look at A2, I'm going to hit my F4 key, 
three times, and I'm going to lock the column reference, but I'm going to leave the row reference relative because when this rule gets repeated down the table, I want it to look at different rows, but I want every cell on that respective row to look at its column A. So my formula is going to check to see if A2 is equal to nothing. If it's equal to nothing, then I don't want to do anything. So I'm actually not going to set any formatting whatsoever. I'm going to hit OK. Now, if we go to the bottom of the table, we still see our artwork. But the reason being is, if we go back to conditional formatting, manage rules, and we look at the rules, our first rule is checking to see if the contents of A2 is blank. And if it is, it will do nothing. But the second rule is then testing to see whether that cell is on an odd or even row and then shading it accordingly. Well, the second rule is stepping on top of the first rule. So what we need to do is we need to check this box after the first rule that says stop if true. So if the cell in column A of any given row is empty, we don't want to do anything and we want to stop processing any further rules. Now when we hit OK, you can see how the empty cell's shading has disappeared. Now the other rules are still working, so if we add new records, so I'll type in Smith, now that would have been a white row anyways, but if I type in Jones, now that whole row is shaded blue. Just as a quick demonstration, I'll just type in the letter A throughout this, and you can see every time I put something in column A, that cell is no longer empty, and then it does the odd even row detection. Now remember, because conditional formatting is managing the color of the cells, if we sort the data, the data moves, but the color doesn't. If we were to insert rows and then type data into those rows, the color automatically appears the way it's supposed to. Thanks for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.